uh, we are very fortunate to discover something new. And uh, uh, during the, the beginning of my PhD, we discovered a molecule called uh, porcine beta defense in five, which was completely unknown. And uh, being always with the pig, we just didn't know that molecule was there. And uh, the, this molecule uh, is naturally produced by the pig, I should say, and uh, is really key for uh, combating both bacterial and viral infections. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson. I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me in our podcast studios this week is Dr. Arthur Neri Fanato. Dr. Fanato is a postdoctorate researcher at Western College of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan. Arthur, thank you so much for coming to the show. Excited to have you on here for the first time and learn some stuff from you. Um, in case, Arthur, there's some folks in our audience who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, why don't you start with an introduction? Thank you very much for uh, having me, Clayton. Uh, so my name is Arthur, and uh, I got my um, DVM degree from the University of uh, Passo Fundo in Brazil and uh, had the opportunity to take a, a Master of Science degree from the University of Sao Paulo. Then I relocated to Canada for my PhD. And uh, well, we've been learning quite a lot lately as well, yeah. You're working in a, a very cool area of immunology, Arthur. Um, you're, you're studying the innate immune system of the pigs, and you've, you've come across some interesting information, maybe even some novel stuff related to some defensins and, and their role in the pig's innate immune system. You want to talk to us a little bit about your research? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we are very fortunate to discover something new and uh, uh, during the, the beginning of my PhD, we discovered a molecule called uh, porcine beta defense 5, which was completely unknown. And uh, being always with the pig, we just didn't know that molecule was there. And uh, the, this molecule uh, is naturally produced by the pig, I should say. And... Uh, is really key for uh, combating both bacterial and viral infections. So once a pig gets sick, this specific gene gets triggered and then overexpress to try to combat that specific uh, pathogen. So that's a really cool uh, tool potentially to be used uh, by the swine industry to mitigate the, infect, the, the, the impact of uh, both the bacterial and the viral infections in the industry. So Arthur, um, talk to us about these defensins in general. What, what are they? You, you, know, you mentioned we just found this one, but what, what do we know about the other ones and their role in def disease defense mechanisms? Do they, do they help the, pre the pig prevent infections? Do they, do they just control the level of disease? How do, how do they work and you know, what, what diseases are they important for that we know of? Yeah, so the pig produced 29 defensins that we know as per today. And these molecules have been tested against several uh, bacteria and the virus. And they do mitigate the growth of uh, both bacterial and the viral uh, agents. And uh, even more interestingly, at least for me, is that these molecules have the capacity to control the immune system of the pig. So they can basically trigger responses from other immune cells. And these other immune cells that sometimes are more specialized in specific uh, infections, they 
can secrete specific chemical factors which can um, improve the resilience and uh, tolerance of the, the pig during the uh, infection scenario. So that's something really interesting about these molecules. Also, at the gut level, they can help the mucosa to prevent the pathogens to enter the intestine. So there is something really cool there because uh, they can modulate the intestinal cells to block the entrance of uh, specific pathogens that are really relevant to the industry. And uh, yeah, this is part of uh, the, the, the role of these molecules in the innate immune system. Arthur, I'm sure there's uh, many producers and veterinarians out there saying, how do I get these defensins, you know, upregulated in my pigs? And so what do we know about um, environmental factors or nutritional factors that stimulate the, the development of these defenses? Or, or does none of that matter and the pig makes them on their own no matter what? Uh, and then also on the genotypes, are, are there certain breeds of pigs that you've studied that, that produce these at a higher level or a lower level? What do we know about the things that impact how well my pigs are using these defenses as part of their defense mechanisms? Great question. So there, there are both scenarios already investigated for us. And this is something really interesting. First, we do have a specific breeds or line of pigs that produce more than others. And um, from a selection perspective, this is really cool because we could potentially develop a selection program in which we select the animals that overexpress these defensins. And then having from a immunological level a pig naturally more resistant and robust. That's something really interesting. And um, the second portion that is really amazing is that we have some nutritional evidence that uh, butyrate and its analogs can induce the, the expression of this beta defensing genes uh, in the intestine of the pig. And uh, this might be a tool to be used during health challenge scenarios. So let's say we identify uh, a few pigs that are getting sick, then we go there and they stimulate them with this with this butyrate or butyrate analogs for them to better fight the infection and not cause a um, widespread uh, problem within the herd. So that's definitely a possibility. Arthur, I know you guys have looked um, at uh, these defensins uh, specifically relative to swine dysentery, um, brachyspira hyodysenteriae. Um, is it is it some of that uh, regulation of the intestinal mucosa that you're talking about? Is that where these are important in the swine dysentery battle? Or help connect the dots for me there. What what can we use the, as this as a new tool in our toolbox for swine dysentery management? So yeah, the, we we discovered this peptide in the context of uh, swine dysentery because uh, our laboratory at the University of Saskatchewan is specialized at understanding the pathophysiology, the mechanism that makes some pigs be more sick due to the Braxpire infection than others, and. Um, we discovered that some of the pigs express more of this defensing and the, consequently they are more resistant to the infection or to develop that really harsh, harmful uh, clinical signs of uh, swine dysentery. Um, and what we learned during my PhD that this molecule does to the intestinal cells is mitigating the inflammatory clinical signs 
induced by Bruxpyra hyacinthi, which is the causative agent of swine dysentery. So, for some reason, this molecule that we discover inhibits that really harsh in, uh, inflammatory response of the pig itself. And uh, sometimes inflammation is a problem. Not, not only is the pathogen, but the inflammatory response of an animal to that specific pathogen is the problem. And this is what we can say that the porcine defense can mitigate. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. Arthur, will there be an opportunity to create these defensins or like analogs of them, chemically similar structures that would be a commercial product or even to harvest them from pigs um, as a commercial product? Can we apply these defensins to our pigs in the future like we think of an antibiotic or a medicine? Yeah, so we are very fortunate to have collaborated with a chemistry group from the University of Quebec in Montreal. And with this chemistry group, uh, we are able to synthesize the, the peptide, this porcinibet defense in five, just like the pig would produce. So we do have the, the tools to produce them in the lab. And this is extremely fascinating to me. However, the cost of producing these peptides is still uh, a challenge to be to be tackled, and then um, perhaps the the selection program may be easier to be achieved than reducing the cost of the synthesis itself. Well, it's certainly going to be exciting to see where that goes. Um, I really appreciate Arthur you coming on to the show, sharing your research updates with us. It's an exciting new area of immunology to be studied and potentially some exciting new tools for producers down the line. Thanks so much for being a part of the show and sharing that with us. Thank you very much, Dr. Clayton. Yeah, well, Arthur, we've got to thank our audience. Uh, we certainly couldn't do this without the folks who listen in and make it possible. So the audience, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode with Dr. Arthur and myself, please like the podcast, share it with a friend, uh, help get the word out there that we make good information and good content. If you haven't checked out our website, please do so at swinehealthblackbelt.com. You can find our old episodes there along with a lot of other great information about the show. For Dr. Arthur Neri Finato, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to spend some time with you. We hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you.